Yeah. All right, this shit's recording, eh? But put the mic closer to you, bro. Yeah, I want it far away. I want it far away. Yeah. Do I sound all right or No, también. <laughs> eh, si, hey, tienes que, si tienes que acercar la mesa un poco más, está bien. I'll get closer. All right, perfect. Everybody good? Yeah. We're good. All right, man. I'm going to see what camera I have. We're good? Camera looks good? All right, bro. Man, back in San Diego, it tells a live podcast, baby. The most authentic, hey. most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Oh. Ah. I love coming to San Diego. And the reason being is because the weather, the people, the people, and the vibes. And shout out today to our sponsor, our host, restaurant in Little Italy, Barbosa. Barbosa. Fire. Fire. We have. Fire. Look at this. Look at this. Espresso martini in a bottle. In a bottle. So if you guys are looking for a nice restaurant with the nice Italian vibes, good food, good drinks, you got to check them out right here in Little Italy. Little, we'll put the... The address down below, and especially in the in the comments. But Bebe, we're not here because we did this. What you mean? Yeah, we, I didn't set this up. You set this up. No, no, you no. There, there's someone. No. Oh, that's right. That's right. There's someone special that set this up for us, and our first time meeting. But we talked on social media, and that's the power of social media: the people you get to reach, the people you get to talk to. And we're joined in by the one and only Darcy. Hey. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sending this up for us, to be honest. Of course. It's my pleasure. I love this restaurant. I come here all the time. So it's my it, go-to. for the people that are getting to know you and are about to get to know you today, where'd you grow up? So little, little things about you. Where'd you grow up? You have kids, siblings. What's, what's your little story about it? Um, well, I grew up in South San Diego, born and raised. Um, growing up, my dad always wanted to kind of upgrade. So we were constantly moving we started off in a little trailer and then we get into a little condo and then like a town hall and then we finally got a house and then things took a turn after there when my parents divorced but overall i mean i can say that my childhood was like pretty good yeah um now that i'm an adult i feel like i noticed the i guess the the subconscious like traumas <laughs> And I get to be, like, aware of them now. I'm like, oh, that's why I'm like that. But in general, I feel like my childhood was, like, really good. My parents were, like, always there, very hands-on. My dad's super supportive, literally, about anything that I ever wanted to do. So it's really amazing to have such a, like, together family. And my sisters, I have uh, three sisters. There's four of us girls, and we're the bestest friends. We have a million group chats, just <laughs> always about the smallest things. Like, hey, guys, I'm going to do this, or I did this, or whatever. And we're just, like, each other's number one fan, and I can't. Mm. I can't relate to people that don't get along with their family. Mm. But I, I always thought it was, like, something normal, right? Yeah. Like, just to have, like, just such a loving, respectful, and, and caring family. I guess in your immediate family, and I've noticed now more that I'm like growing up and seeing people around me that they don't really have that. So it's really a privilege, and I'm so blessed, and I love, I love my family. So family to you is is everything. Though. Everything. Oh, and I have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Small detail. Just, just very casually. <laughs> just casually, I have a three year old beautiful daughter. She's my little bestie. She calls me her bestie. Wait, so really, let's just jump right into it. So for you. Have, coming, having divorced parents, but having them very united in how you're saying, very fi- still family oriented as yeah. as irregular as it may sound. Was it hard for you to not bring those traumas going through your childhood into now being a parent also? Or like, what was that struggle of transitioning into you becoming a mom? Um, well, that's why I'm a single mom. <laughs> You went there. <laughs> you went there real quick. It just started. I, she, no. I think Put, I, her I, Cut her Cut off. Cut her off. Her off. No more martinis. I, no I don't more think martinis. I can have any more of these. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's the truth. Um, unfortunately, I realized my patterns a little bit too late. But of course, I have the biggest blessing in 
I will never regret my daughter. I'm obsessed with her. She's she's really like giving me purpose. But like I said, I see the patterns of like the the people that I've chosen in my life, not even just romantically, just even in like friendships. Ooh. Just a little bit toxic and me trying to prove myself constantly. I've noticed that's a pattern with my dad. It's like he's my number one supporter, but at the same time my number one doubter. Like, oh, I don't think I don't think that's possible. I don't think you can do that. He's like, but I'm here for you, you know. So I'm constantly like, hey, daddy, look at me. Look at what I did. Look at what I can do. Trying to, like, straight A student in every single sport that you can think of. Like, yeah. doing things, working since I'm 16 years old. Like, trying to always kind of show out and do more for people than I receive kind of in return. Yeah. But I've noticed that I understand him because he he. Him and my mom always did their best to, you know, raise us. He's always, like, obviously with a good intention. A parent is never going to have, like, a bad intention for you. Um, so we forgive him in that part. <laughs> but to the point is, um, I could have made better choices growing yeah. up had I been aware of how it affected me. It would have affected me in my adult life. But obviously, it's it's been like a learning experience, and yeah. now I'm more mindful. Now I'm more aware. Now I'm more intentional with who I surround myself with, who I let inside my life. Setting yeah. those boundaries is so healthy. And right now, I'm kind of in my like growing season, and it's a little bit lonely. Not gonna lie, but it's just when you heal, you become so distant because you start to see things and people, and you're like, oh, are you actually my friend? Or are you just using me? What are you bringing to or the like, table? Are we meeting each other in the middle? Yeah. Or am I the only one giving and trying to prove myself, you know, to you? Because, again, my patterns with my dad, that's like always trying to prove myself and trying to show out. I think it goes it goes a, a lot deeper into this. And I know uh, with Pepe, like we understand this too much. And for everybody listening, it's like I think we've all been stuck in a position where we have gave more than we ever received. And we hope that they one day give us the same love and attention that we always gave them. Yeah. And maybe they're not in the best place right now. And we keep using that excuse for them. Oh, they're not okay right now. Or they're in a season right now. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll do it. It's it's me. I'll give I'll love you. I'll show you show you the attention. I'll be there for you. And then when shit hits the fan and you're down bad, like you feel like you need the saving. And when you look and you call and they don't answer and no one is there, you're like, mm -hmm. fuck, now I have some sort of resentment towards you. Cause like, yeah, I love you. Come here and still hang out with me. But fuck, where were you when I needed you, right? And I know, I mean, this it's a it's a season. I know I understand yeah. your season because that's what me and Pepe were talking on the way here, where it's just like, you know, sometimes where I think we've all been in a situation where someone is a priority, your friend, your your loved one is a priority, and you're theirs, and then someone comes into your life, some come, someone comes into their life, and you become second priority. And they put all their marbles, all their love, all their attention on them, and they put you to the side. But when shit hits the fan, and the person that they counted on puts them at second, now they try to come back. It's like, whoa, you left me then. How the fuck can you come back now when you made me the second option and you made someone else a priority? It's just now they showed you your true colors. And it's tough. Like, this goes for, it could be your significant other. It could be a group of friends. It can be any relationship, like, that you're in and how you said, like, how you were saying, and I love it, that your romantic relationships and your friendships, they all coincide together. Yeah. Right. Like you, you, we find our toxic traits of who we are and what we are tried. And it's like, damn, I really got to think about this. And that part is crazy because I've come to the realization that like I I like attach to people so fast, like a kind of like a codependency because yeah, I, I, I I don't know. I feel like I need them or like I'm trying to show or, or make up for that part, you know. Yeah. Um, but to excuse my dad, it's just like. He was limited kind of like growing up and he didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like his mindset is limited because he oh, doesn't believe sure. in himself. You yeah, know? for sure. Because, because, because he, he loves me with all his heart. Like literally, I would not be able to do 
and we'll get to that like my new business without him everything that i've ever done like like it's always like i don't believe you can do it kind of but i'm your number one fan and i'm gonna be there i'm gonna drive a million hours to go see you talk mm -hmm. for 10 seconds like yeah. he will go above and beyond to always be there for us yeah. because that's his dad heart but mm -hmm because of his like inner child is speaking saying those insecurities saying like mm. i don't think you can do it because he yeah. never believed he could yeah you know i feel like it, it's like um a little bit like conformista because uh, sí. i'm always like dad like you can do more you can do this you can no, do okay. that there's options you know no, okay so in in i know that his intentions are good but at the same time i've kind of developed like those habits growing up and and those attachment styles And I'm trying to really work on those mm -hmm. because we can't have those type of friendships. And I tend to, like I was saying, like cling to people so fast and I call them my soulmates. And I'll be like, I known you for a long time. But you know, the thing about soulmates is sometimes they're a little bit toxic because they're a reflection of you and your youth. Like that's why it feels like home because you know that environment, you thrive in it because you're like, ah, I know this. Either in, in your growing up or your friendships or whatever, it feels like home. And that's why you call them your soulmates. You feel like, oh, my God, I feel like I've known you forever. Why? Because they're a reflection of your childhood traumas, like literally. And you know how to deal with those things. So you're like, ah, I could do this. But yeah. then when somebody healthy comes around, either in your friendships or, or relationships or whatever, and they're too good, you're like, nah, yeah. this can't be. And then you're like, let me test it. <laughs> let me test it let hey. me see if you really love me let hey. me see how far you'll go for me let oh. me test you out and it's just like no you don't have to be testing people yeah. you know these people that you feel like you need to test are the ones that you need to keep around the ones sometimes that you call your soulmates it's really hard to really attach to somebody when it's genuine because a connection is built over time you need to get to know people you need to know their intentions you need to see the, their efforts like mm. how down are you you know to ride with me yeah. like through the thick and the thin and you can't see that off of an instant like um i guess meeting someone you can't yeah. you can't find your soulmate like that you need to know more about them you need to see maybe like how they grew up or what are their goals what are they working for you know are they yeah. talking about oh what i used to do or what i would love to do or look at what i'm working on now this mm. is the type of people that i want around you know yeah. i want to talk to people who are telling me like this is what I'm working on because nothing matters other than the present you know and and that's that's kind of been my um i guess new season of like friendships that I'm trying to develop that's why it's a little bit lonely because i realize my attachment styles have led me to certain relationships in in every aspect even some family members that i've cut off and i'm just like i'm sorry we that you happens. know we're not We're not on the same wavelength right now, you know, and I, and I realize I yeah. realize a lot of, of things that it's like, oh, damn, like my attachments are not healthy sometimes, especially on that codependency or trying to prove myself. And it's gonna mean some trouble, but I feel like I'm at a point where I can identify people's intentions now, if they're genuine and if they care about me, like genuine, like Luis, like how are you? Like how yeah. can I help you? How can I be there for you? Like with no strings attached, you know? Yeah. Like there's, there's like, like this, like I don't even know you, but I, I see that you're a good person and that you're trying to make like a positive impact. So who am I not to help? You know? And yeah. I don't ask for anything in return. And, and it's genuine, you know, and I feel like yeah. that's what a, a, friend, a real friendship is going to be. But then, you know, there will be some back and forth like mm -hmm. we, we can help each other grow. That's, and that's that's the beautiful thing of, of a real friendship that I at least look for. Yeah. And <clears throat> taking me 29 years to realize. But I feel like it's never too late <laughs> because sometimes people don't understand that, yeah. like that you need to be a little bit more intentional and self-aware about who you're with because like everybody sure. always says you're who you surround yourself with. for sure and and that's why you know i love my friend group because we can go to work and and get to the business that we need to and we could talk motivational stuff we could talk about real life stuff we could talk about what's really going on but then we can also detach and just go and enjoy ourselves not just sit in silence and enjoy each other's company You know, we can have the moments where we fuck around with each other and, and talk all this shit to each other. But then we can sit down and, how you said, ask each other, yo, how are you? Are you okay? What do you need? 
nothing? Okay, cool. I love you. I'll talk to you later. And it's just that simplicity. And that's, again, that's why, like, Pepe, Gio, Amy, like, we have that bond and that relationship of, like, we know we don't need each other. We know we can't, like, we're fine without each other. But each other's company is everything. And we know these type of energies and relationships, it's really hard to find because it's so genuine. I, you don't need me and I don't need you, but I want you in my life because I know I am better. Each yes. other. It's It could never be about completing. Yeah. You know, you guys not. are, I think that's the beautiful thing uh, about you guys. And that's why I love watching you guys. Cause I feel like you guys in, as individuals are whole and you don't need each other, yeah. but you complement each other so well. And it's like together you can grow and go further. Yeah. I wanted to ask Pepe because you brought, you brought up uh, soulmates. You believe in that? Who brought up soulmates? Acá mi, mi amigaza. I'm like, I know I didn't bring it up. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm like, do I believe in soulmates? You always ask these questions. Um, I said it on one of the podcast episodes like a long time ago. I haven't met my soulmate yet, right? At least romantic soulmate. I do believe there's like friends that can be your soulmates and that uh, help you better yourself and that feel like home. Yeah. But in regards to relationship, obviously, I feel like there are. But I just haven't met that person just yet. Do you believe in soulmates at first sight? <laughs> I believe in, we actually talked about that on, uh, what is it, previous episode. I believe in attraction at first sight. Ooh. I feel like that person may be your soulmate. You just don't know until you get to know them. Yeah. Right? So. You got to go through some shit first. You got to go through a lot. Like she said, it takes time. That's it crazy. Takes- yeah, because sorry to cut you off. Sorry, no people, really. I'm known for cutting people off. <laughs> Rude of me. But like how you said, like we we tend to attract certain people and then when we're familiar with that type of person damn i've been looking for you all my life it's like noticing the little as it progresses like damn you just like me <laughs> oh, i don't know if i want to date someone just like me right like i'm really bad why do i want to date someone just as bad as me you know what i mean <laughs> but i feel like i don't know how you guys feel about this do you feel if you meet someone you expect Along the way for them to save you from yourself? I feel like we're never going to be 50-50. So sometimes I'm going to be 80 and you're going to be 20 and I'm all there for you. But I'm going to need you to fill my cup back. You know, give me that 20% back. I'm gonna. Yeah. It's like a borrowing, you know, like I'm going to need it back at the end of the day. Because we're not always going to be good, you know. Yeah. We're, we're going to have those seasons and those roller coasters in our lives and sometimes when you know that you can count on that one person it's like okay right now i don't got me you know and they can step up without even you asking yeah that that part is the kind of people that you want in your circle what it for sorry i'm gonna ask you this i I was gonna can i answer that question though i believe what she's saying i mean i believe you have to be able to save yourself to begin with Mm -hmm. it's just nice to have somebody there to give you that little help that you need what exactly you don't need that person it's like you know that I can do it myself, but, but that little you help, don't let me. That little help is always appreciated. All right, so when you give someone your love, your attention, your affection, everything in you, you give it to somebody, what do you expect back? Or what do you hope to get back? Just to love me the same way that I love you. I don't expect much. I don't. It's just reciprocate what I give you, whether that be friendship, love, whatever it is, my time. Yeah. That's what I expect back. Oh, man. I think your time, money, and energy needs to always be reciprocated in a friendship. And if it's mm. not, then you it's need like, to. It's like, if we go out or something, I got it. I got you. You got I, me? I got you. For real? Yeah, I got you. Shit. Hey, run it up. Hey, but you Come got on. me next time, right? For sure. Block the call. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer. I just feel like some, sometimes it's just like yeah. you don't even think about it because you know that they got you on the next one. Sometimes just, it's a one it's a one one street way. You know what I mean? You know, someone knows about that today. You know, it's only a one way street. <laughs> <laughs> San Diego, man, little Italy, one way streets are crazy. You better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we get stuck in a situation where it's just it's only a one way street. Yeah, and no. you have to meet each other. Yeah. In the middle. It, it, it's like a, a tug and pull, you know? If you're the one pulling, you're going to fall. Yeah. Like, you you have to be able to have that balance to make a relationship work. Yeah. If not, it's not a relationship. You're just 
pouring yourself into a person who's just a taker. Mm. And I feel like the, the, it's kind of like a narcissistic quality because it's mm. always about them, yeah. you know? And so, then, I'll go for it. So how do you know when to just let go of that rope, you mm. know, and that relationship? That's when not you're the only taking. one looking for them, when you're the only one putting out your time, your money, your energy, when you're not, when you don't feel like you can receive that tomorrow when you need them, then it's not a real friendship. And then do you think that also applies to relationships? Absolutely. And do you ever let people you, back in your life? You, that's another story, right? Gender roles. <laughs> I, I really do believe in the essence of gender roles and they were made for a reason. Yeah. Mm. So as a man, his job is to protect and provide. Yeah. And a woman is going to come in and she's going to make a house a home. She's going to be the one to guide you to to like nurture the relationship to keep, you know, a man afloat. Tell me, tell me a man's success because of the woman that he has on his side. Yeah. You know, you're a team. You're going to get each other. And you know what? Sometimes maybe the woman is, might have to step in, yeah. but she knows that at the end of the day, he's going to get her right back. And I mm. think that that's that's the beautiful flow of a real relationship between a guy and, or a male and a female. Yeah. It's like when you understand your, your roles, things flow together. Mm. Right. I think to answer the question you, you asked, like, when do you know? I think when you get into the situation where you have to second guess the relationship of what, why is this person in my life? I'm doing so much and they're only doing this. I think that's when you should cut it off. Because there's a reason why you're getting shown these things, why you're getting, they're making these actions. And how we said on the, on the way here, like, God doesn't show you anything he doesn't want you to see. It is, are you ready to comprehend it and understand it? Yeah. You know, when times get tough, he's going to, he's going to throw things at you to test you and then see, hey, you're going to make the right decision. You know, life is, is literally 90% of, of what happens to you, right? And how you react from it, like yeah. literally so whatever happens to you, how do you react from it? Someone does you dirty, how do you react from it? Someone leaves you when you need them, how do you react? Do you keep them around and keep expecting that they're going to change who they are? Or do you cut it off and, and now you take care of yourself? Now you save yourself. Because isn't that what insanity is? Is doing the same action and expecting a different result every time. So it's just like the more you keep them like, hey, it's okay, it's okay, the more they're like, all right. It's okay. I, I could keep doing it. Uh, they won't leave. You got to take a mental note. Sometimes you got to let people be to yeah. see what they really want to do. Yeah. And, and if you see that they're, that they're not respecting you, if they're not giving you peace, if you don't feel like you can um, call them and ask them for a favor, mm -hmm. then th it's no longer yeah. serving you. you yeah. Know? It's um simple as phone calls, right? Like, when little, I, little check ins. I feel like everybody, you know, obviously is in their own grind. Yeah. You know, everybody has their own lives. Nice. And at least for me, I need like low maintenance relationships, someone that I know that I can call no matter what, no matter what time. Yeah. But you don't need to be talking every single day to know that they got your back. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's do, do what I expect you to, to do without me asking. Like, I expect you to show up for me. I expect you to. But if you don't, then ya vas a saber, you know? You see their intentions. You see their intentions. But, you see, I love having Pepe on because this guy does his homework. He did his homework the last two hours on the drive here. Oh, well, yeah? He, you, had a, he had a couple questions what's your for... What's research? <laughs> El Instagram? <laughs> Instagram? He Google search, Google Alex? search. No, 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 no. It's, I didn't do that much homework today. Uh, he said, you know what? It's going to be something a little bit more casual today. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask, what, uh, what has been going on in your life lately that you didn't expect? Mm. Mm, that part. That part. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Todo la verga. I'll, I'll, I'll do a good one. I'll do a positive one. I'll do a positive one. It can be negative, too. It's okay. Um, People love the sad <laughs> People stuff. People love the trauma. The cheese man. They do. They love I it. I mean, trending topics. Long story short, I didn't. I didn't think I would be in a position to, to feel like I need to provide. I guess. Um. They the this other person does provide, but it's just 
I feel like I thrive better knowing that I can provide no mm. matter what. It gives me peace. But it's just I was ne- uh, at least I didn't ever have to think about that okay. until now. And now I'm like, whoo, life is crazy expensive, especially with a kid. And it's it's pretty crazy just trying to find that like I, I don't believe in balance, but trying to organize my priorities, I guess. In this season, it's been really crazy. Lots of uh, loss of sleep. <laughs> you know, we, we have to kind of, it's like you, you don't have time, you make time. But I feel like I have the, the vision is clear. Mm. The vision is clear of where I want to be. And I see that financial freedom becoming so close. And I love that for me. And I love that for me and my daughter. Mm. Because... I'm working my butt off right now, doing literally the most, working 15, 16 hour days, like, and and I don't even complain. It's just like, I'm like in go mode, go mode, go mode. Like, I don't even look back. I don't have time to stop and think. And I think that there's beauty in that chaos because all I do when I want to kind of give up, when I'm just overwhelmed or I'm tired or my baby is like asking for my attention and I'm just like kind of like literally yeah. dozing off, like it's it's a horrible feeling, you know, not being able to, to be the mom that I, I would love to be, you know, kind of more present. But in this season of my life, it's just kind of like investing into my businesses so that I can be that mom. You know, it's just a sacrifice. I see myself in a few months not having to worry or to look in my bank account to make sure that I can make a purchase or that I can take my daughter or take the day off tomorrow to take her anywhere. And that's the, that's where I want to be. But it's just, I had to go through this first in order to, to be in that place that I'm like, okay, this is exactly where I wanted to be in the first place. You guys have kids. I don't, so it doesn't apply to me, but hopefully you guys have an answer to you know, and you may be able to help parents who deal with the same situation. How do you deal with the guilt of not being there for your children, especially when they're so young and they're learning a lot? And right now it's probably the time that they may need you the most. Before she answers, I know there's, for everybody watching, there's a difference between a dad guilt and a mom guilt. So so we can talk about so both. So speak yeah, on yeah. that dad guilt. Okay, <laughs> so... So the way I feel about dad guilt is we can take it. Like, we know that we're not, we're not there. We know I know that I'm gone. I know that I can't be present right now because daddy's building an empire for all of us. And I, and I could keep going, you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, as bad as I may feel, I, I may forget it throughout the day because I'm just so busy on the go, you know. And if a dad's not there, it's expected. It's ah, it's working, normal. But when a mom isn't there, where is she? A kid always needs his mom. Oh, that mom has to be there. Mom is super important. And as a dad, you're, why are you not with your kids? Yeah, why are you not with your kids? But yeah. and as a dad, it's like, sadly, people expect it. People expect dads not to be there around as often because, si el hombre no trabaja, then what is he doing? You know what I mean? I've said this before, and it's like I know what I'm doing. And I know what I have to put up and what I got to go through. And yes, it sucks. I'm sorry. But this is what I need to do in order for us to live a better life. Now, I'm okay with the repercussions right now because I keep getting told, oh, you're missing out on the best times of your kids' of your kids' life. You're missing out on the, on the most crucial times. I understand that. But if I don't do this right now, do you think I'm going to do it later on when they're much older, when they're more aware, when they need you there more? So it's or when they don't want to be with you. Yeah, right now they're oh, mom, dad, <laughs> mommy, daddy, and then when they get older, what the fuck, get the fuck away from me. Me dejas en la esquina. Hey, no por, que me hey, por favor, por favor, no digas nada. I, me, me dejas ahí en la esquina. No, no te, no te asombres. But as a dad, I think it's expected. Yeah. As a mom, I think it it is it has its different uh, reasons and its different repercussions. So if you can give us that side of because you're an entrepreneur yeah that that's that's the i know we can maybe relate to this because you're an entrepreneur you know what it takes in order to build a business from bottom 
to where you're at right now and the business you just have, you just op- you just got your keys to your warehouse. Yes. Like you Thank literally you. for for the people that don't know, how long ago did you open this this business? <laughs> August seventh. Less Look than three months ago. Three months ago. Wow. Grinding. Mm-hmm. It's a different awesome. type of grind. It's a different type it's of It's a different hustle, ah. man. So mom guilt, you not being there, you not being around. Maybe Maybe being there, but still not present. Yeah. Take us through that. It's espresso martini. <laughs> not te lo has acabado, no. Ya es agua. No. Ya es agua. She took two sips. Uh, ya se derritió el chocolate. I was saying too much already. Damn. Um, it's hard. Because I feel like as a mother, no one is going to love your children more than you. I feel like a dad obviously is going to love their kids like unconditionally, but she knows my heartbeat and I know hers. And literally we are one. Like she oh she'll see me like when I'm not good and she'll be like, Come here, mommy. I'll give you a hug so you can be happy. You know, sometimes she's there for me when I'm not even there for myself or for both of us. Right now, I feel like in I'm in, like, my masculine energy, you know, trying to protect, provide, be the, be the mother, um, even though I feel very guilty that I'm not doing the motherly things. My house ain't that clean like, that, like I'd love for it to be. I haven't yeah. been able to really cook her, you know, these home-cooked meals. So yeah. sometimes I go in later to work just because I feel guilty. Like, I just want to make breakfast for my baby, you know? Just the small things, but... Let me ask you a, a question to just follow up on this. Are you tired of feeling that way? No. What keeps you going in these days, in these moments where you look back and you feel like you're not being the best mother? When she tells me that I'm the best mommy. <laughs> can let it out. I feel like when we... Space. I feel like when we start crying, it's because we've been holding it in too long, you know. But it, it's, I just don't really have the the time, you oh, know, to ever actually think about it. Don't talk about time. <laughs> what? Where you were up at three in the morning yesterday? You got time. You know what I mean? I could have slept a little bit less to cry. <laughs> to cry. No, I, I don't. Cried I don't want to waste night. my time contemplating of what I could be doing when mm. I need to think about what I should be doing, you know? Mm. And it's and it's to do the best that I can to be there for my daughter. And right now, like I say, I'm in the time. I'm in a season of investing. And this is just what we got to do. I have bigger goals for us, you know? Mm. She's she's three. She She's so smart. She's so smart. Like, like I say, like, she, she comforts me, you know? And I know that when when she's ready and she can have like a full on conversation and everything, I'm gonna be like like I just took her to Hawaii, you know? And and I never in my wildest dreams did I think that I could afford something like that. We yeah. dated at, we stayed at Aulani and it was just like I had to think about it, you know? And just just um quick backstory, like I started this new business that it's going to give me that financial freedom. And God is so amazing. He works in incredible ways. Like Mm. there was the biggest blessing in the most chaotic time. I didn't think that I would be able to afford to give her a birthday. And that just crushed me because I was like, I'm, I'm like, you know, still measuring and, and like trying to limit myself on things that I do for me, not going out and whatever it is so yeah. that I, I, I don't ever have to be like, I don't know if I can make rent this month. Yeah. But I was like, I have the expense of Hawaii coming up. And that was already like questionable. Like I even felt guilty. Like, can I even do this? You know? Yeah. So that's why I started kind of going turbo. And I was like, I don't I can't afford this birthday. But I said, how can I say no? How can I tell her no when she's saying, Mommy, I want a Barbie party and a princess party. Well, guess what? Mommy gave her two parties. On her birthday, I did a Barbie party. And on, you know, her bigger birthday, I did a princess party. And I said, you know what? You become resourceful as a parent. Like, mm. 
I can't give you this huge vision, but I'm going to give you the best that I can. And trust me, she would have been happy with even a toy. Yeah. Because their their kids are just so innocent and so grateful. They don't yeah. know. It, it's that part. Like, your kid will be happy with just you being there, you giving them the smallest things. Yeah. But they just because, want your time. Yeah. They just want to be with you. Yeah, but because of us, because of us as, as parents and knowing how hard we're working, hey, if I want anybody to enjoy my fruits of my labor, it's going to be my kids, my friends, and my family that have been there for me since day one, that didn't, that didn't neglect me for working too much, that didn't hold me back from believing in my dreams. I'm going to enjoy what I do now, the fruits of my labor, with the people that were there since day one. That didn't come. I mean, I know there's people going to come along the journey, but there's people that you meet along the way that have done more for you in a short amount of time than someone that you've known for 10 years. Yeah. And that's the crazier part. It's just our timing aligns. So the same people I starve with are the same people I'm going to enjoy a thousand dollar dinner with because I know they deserve that and much more because what they did for me in my life is priceless. Yeah. You know what I mean? So damn, baby, that just went off of one one question, dude. I'm what? the first one. Oh my god! Man. Cut I it off. I wasn't trying to do that. So we're trying to cry this early, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, what time is it? Like ten in the morning. Baby. No, it's eleven already. Don't worry. Oh, when, oh, okay, already then yeah. After Anything eleven, after you, 11, can, 11 you, can you can cry. Shed you can the tears. Cry. Don't shed worry. When it, when Amy came on the podcast, she cried the first time too. You know. Um, remember, remember that chiadera? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I think you just do what you can with 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 what you the cards that are played to you, and Facts. you just do it without complaining because every I I fuel my my heart and my mind with gratitude mm. when naturally by habit I want to complain I want to feel depressed because I've been there last year I I just I, when I got the warehouse. I just had a little moment to myself, like driving back home from the warehouse yeah. because I got the warehouse, mind you, two and a half months into the business. Who does that? You know, like kind of giving myself props, but like, for yeah. real, like I well, fucking props. busted Talk my, shit. I busted my ass off for, for getting to that level to be like, I didn't even know how I could afford rent two months ago. And now I'm like, let me invest in a warehouse. Facts. You know what I mean? Like you can Hell change yeah. your life so fast when you become just grateful for the smallest things grateful to wake up this morning you know what like i I just really uh, encourage people to kind of change that mindset of like i have to to i get to everything doesn't i get to you get to go to work you get to take care of your kid you get to stay up at night with them you get to be the one to take care of them when they're sick like that is a privilege that is a privilege if you have the means to walk and to talk and to to get up and find a, a new mean to make money to fight then to freaking put up a fight yeah then who are you to deny yeah you know you 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 look at your child and tell them that you don't have time for it when people say like oh oh I don't have time I don't have time tell them that they're not your priority tell them that you're not that they're not your priority God damn. it's just crazy you know yeah. like yeah, sometimes you're going to have to sleep less, and, and that's all right. Yeah, when someone says, I'm too tired, or I don't have time, or that's too much. Just bro, respond with, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have time to see you. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have time is. to respond to you. That, and that's just the fact. That's what, like, look, for people that are struggling right now with maybe your friend groups that keep telling you that they don't have time, that they're too busy. Uh, except for mine, I love you. I'm in my growing season. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, surround yourself with five fucking winners and you will be the six. Surround yourself with with people that are willing to do it and willing to sacrifice whatever it is to get to the next level in their own lane, in their own journey. You know, it's just at that time, your journey's coincided and you motivate me, you motivate me because our fucking dreams align, our visions align, our work ethic aligns. I cannot be around people that are like, oh, I'm too tired. Oh, no. Fuck no. Like, do you not know my guy here slept one fucking hour because he was working last night? Shout like, out Gio. Shout out Gio. Shout out Poder. Shout out. Shout out CEO over there sitting down with us. Um, but those are the type of people that, like, when we say, damn, we're tired, bro, it's, it's because we stood up and we were doing the damn thing still. That's why, like, I told Pepe was like, you didn't sleep. I was like, nah, dude, I slept like three hours. He's like, did you go out? And I'm like, nah, I wish. <laughs> I was like, but I had, he's all he's all partying. It's because me conoce, me conoce, me conoce. He said you didn't post no stories. You didn't I'm post the close friends. I got me conoce. 
So I was like, no, like I have responsibilities. And in order for my job to be better on Sunday, to be able to see my kid, to be able to have time for him and to make that time and be like, I'm not stressing about anything because people don't know. I'm, I'm with my kid. I don't post him a lot. I don't post my daughter a lot because I don't need anybody. I don't need their fucking approval. Yeah. Like, I don't need to post this for you guys to approve that. Oh, he's with it. No, no, no. Fuck you guys. I'm with my kids, even if you don't see it. But I'm with them. And come Sunday night, if I didn't take care of my responsibilities early in the week, well, yo sufro en la noche. Why? Because I got to edit. I got to post. I got to upload. And it takes a long fuck motherfucking time. But people don't see that. People just want to. People don't. People want to see your grind. So just to ah, he doing it. They don't give a really. They don't really can give care less if you're really working or not. That's the thing. People pretend like you think people really care about. No, no, no. They just. No matter if you. No matter if you win ten times, twenty times, thirty. All they care about is when you stop. Yeah. All they care about is oh he failed. All they care about is oh he ain't doing it like that no more. No. I'm still doing it. You just ain't seen it yet. You know, I had, to, I, had to, I had to go back into my cave mode. You ain't going to see this right now. My turtle my turtle mode. You ain't going to see this just yet. We're caught in silence. The success. Yeah. So when, when this comes out, instead of coming to San Diego and recording in the hotel room, and shout out to my guy, uh, Jose, your social media guy, that allows us to record in his space. Shit. Now we're doing this at an actual restaurant. Shout out to the best Italian place right here in, in downtown. Like, that, this Levels. Is, this is huge, by the way. This is like top restaurant. Yeah, they're people, always full. People like, don't understand that San Diego's made out of money. Yep. They don't need no. They don't need nobody. <laughs> they got that shit, right? Yeah, we need you. Yeah, but I need you. I need you. <laughs> thank my, you for the espresso martinis. Mas, mas, hey, I, thank I you for. Refill, I need a refill. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> for letting me sit <laughs> no, my, my first one. Fire, hey, you guys pop. They they pop my cherry here. I never had an espresso martini. Crazy. Pinky's up. Pinky's up. Pinky's up. Pink- ah. A toast to life. A toast to life. No, yo, yo, yo no tengo el agua. Los, los, los frijolitos. <laughs> los frijolitos. De la olla o machucados? I don't know. They're espresso Repitos. beans. No, no, no. Real question. Hmm. Frijoles, machucados o de la olla? Oh, de la olla. I'm done for both. Machucados. Done People? for both. Eh, so, eh, so me re- okay, wait, wait. This At what been, time of the day wait, are this, we talking any about? Any time of the day. What the fuck? <laughs> Frijoles, any time of the day. Bigger question. Tortillas or tostadas? Ooh, tortillas. tortillas. Get the fuck out of here. Darina. Get the fuck. Tostadas. Oh, darina, sure. uh, echas a mano. <laughs> hey, I don't know down. how to make them, but I would love to learn. ¿Sabes cocinar? ¿Qué cocinas? That's the sad part. My craft is not being shared with the world. No, okay, the microwave it. don't count. Okay, the cup. Ah, el marrochan. <laughs> los Lucky Charms con la leche. No, Costco, you buy the, like, the 20 pack of like uh, fried rice. Of, oh, that shit's our bomb. Nah, you're burning yourself out. Oh, people know. If you go to uh, my... If I you, do the crock pot. If you go, <laughs> <laughs> if you go to my house, hey, ¿qué quieren de comer? Sí. Okay, deja calentarlo bien rápido. El teriyaki molde del Costco. Shout out Costco. El, hey, chicken. El, el dino chicken. Sartén, dino chicken. He's like, shh, un poquito de aceite. Hey, salpimito. just like he thinks he's a chef. Look, people think that at my house I have uh, dino chicken nuggets for my kids. Bruh, took their mind. <laughs> they got their own pack. <laughs> oh, shit, they're mine. Hey, late, oh, na- late night, 12 a.m., you yeah. hungry? Hey, put about 12 in a plate. Three minutes. Game changer. Boom. Put some buffalo sauce on top. ¿Qué estás haciendo? <laughs> hey, get the crinkle cut fries, though. Put him on the air fryer? Damn, estoy pobre. No air fryer. Ah, oh, damn. I just ordered from Jack in the Box Postmates. It's okay. I got my night DTM as a discount store. <laughs> no, I think uh, Postmates has... Jack in the Box has my address already pinned. You know, 1 a.m. hits and... I was like, oh, man. They, they're already waiting outside. <laughs> damn. Hey, for that person that stole my chicken sandwich, I'm going to find you. Damn. Damn, that was fucked up. Sandwich. I had like, two chicken sandwiches. I only had one. I was fucked up. They were hungry too. Chick- I was Chick-fil-A mad. Chick-fil-A or uh, what is it called? The Louisiana. What, 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 what is that? Oh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. He's like, it don't even Come matter. On. Chick-fil-A. It doesn't matter. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but what about if it's a Sunday? Where are you going? Damn. Church? Duh. <laughs> La hostia. La hostia. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. Little Caesars or Domino's? Little Caesars, man. Especially Pepe? late at night. The cold? 
I'm on about the cold pizza. <laughs> my my mom and dad is like, caliente la pizza. What? Mom, like, no. <laughs> I was waiting for it. To try come this. Out. Try this. All right, what's another one? Uh, Valentina. Oh, tapatio or the what's the other one? Tabasco. Mm, tapatio. Tapatio. Mm. On uh, ceviche, ketchup or no ketchup? No ketchup. Que es un cocktail, okay? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Ke- oh. <laughs> Ketchup or ranch? Ketchup. Ketchup. I don't deal with that ranch. Buffalo sauce. Let me fuck you guys up. Buffalo sauce. Hey, I told you about the buffalo sauce. Yeah, but that's on everything. Yeah. Even I had it with the Jack in the Box tacos. It'll dip on the buffalo sauce. <laughs> Chill, bomb. See what else? What, what's another one that that's for debate? Tacos or sushi? Oh, Ooh, sushi. Tacos. Sushi. Tacos, tacos, at tacos at night. Tacos at night. Sushi. Sushi for dinner. Hey, you guys are in Oh, we've been there too many times. We got like we got like two trades. We did both. We no did. cheese steaks. All right, two in the morning. <laughs> Don't fuck with that. <laughs> That's not for debate. That is. A game. If you're in San Diego, you go to gas time. You're having fun time with your friends, family, whatever, and you're gone, or you're just hungry late at night. Look, look, look. Que se te baje la peda un poco. Look, go get a. Uh, Cheese Philly steak. It might be a little expensive, but when you're when you're drinking, you don't care. You don't, you now when you you don't care. You don't care. Hey, hey, happens when you're drunk, it didn't happen. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, pero, <laughs> pero mañana cuando despiertas, ¿y qué pasó con mis 100 dólares? Los diste, güey. No, because it's better than the pizza across the street. I'm sorry to say. I'm really sorry to say. The pizza across the street is like 20 bucks a slice. Bro, twenty five. Go get a go get a sandwich. Smacking. I know someone here that was smacking on that shit that like, night. Like, the you? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. But um, yeah. So that's it. Was our food? Our food? Uh, Casos like, cerrados. Hey, no, no, I watch Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. What about Laura? Uh, ¿Qué pasa, desgracia? <laughs> Que pasa, desgraciado. No, <laughs> hey, right? hey, the OG, the Jose Luis. Jose Luis, Jose Luis. <laughs> Jose Luis in censura. Yeah, then they come out oh, with the potasos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said I was practicing for that role. Oh, man, that's, no, no, no for sure. This conversation no. went so it went so sideways. How did this? What were we talking about? We went from well, crying we to like motivation and we're still to the like deep talk. Um, we're still on the first question. Oh. Oh. We can move it on. Can move it on, you sure? Yeah, yeah. I think we that we debated everything. Ketchup over ranch, tacos over sushi, little Caesars over Domino's, and Chick-fil-A, no matter what. So when it comes to family and business. Oh. So when it comes to family and business, how do you know what to prioritize and what can wait? Oh. Because there's something that you guys have to deal with. Mm. Damn. I I truly believe that you have to, if you're going to give 100% to one thing, whether it's your business, you have to also give your 100% maximum effort to the other thing, which is your family. Without our family, we wouldn't be who we are. Without our support system, we wouldn't even be standing. Without our day ones, we wouldn't even have that reassurance that we can actually do what we're doing, you know? how we said earlier the people that really truly love you will understand that hey you may you may miss some days you may miss some parties you may miss uh some family events some gatherings you know they may you may be sitting there at the table and you may still not be present because your mind is rolling at 100 miles an hour but you know the people that truly love you will understand that right now you're in a season of growing and in order for you to see the fruits of your labor you know, it doesn't happen in a year, two years, maybe three. It may happen at five years, you know. But once that is, once that comes, and I was telling you on the way here, that what's crazy now is we're starting to see the fruits of our labor now. So many days, so many hours, so many months, so many weeks of constant work, daily work, posting, just going through every single fucking emotion of, damn, am I doing enough? Am I re- Is this really going to work? Am I? Is this really going to pay off at one day? To now seeing it, it's like, Nah, I'm in, I'm in this. I knew this was going to pay off. I just didn't know when. And that's when the patient come about. That's where, like, now you're, 
Like, you're responsible for your family to believe in, in your vision. You're responsible. And it's going to hurt some people because your family is not going to believe in your fucking dream or your vision because it's unattainable right now. It, it's not tangible. You know, you can't show them a result of what your dream looks like because you don't have it yet. Once you start getting that result, once you start saying the little payback, then you can show your family, your parents, your, your loved ones, hey, look, oh, okay, so it is working. Yeah, yeah, it's just taking me a little bit of time. Just be patient. It's coming. It's coming. You know what I mean? So I have dreams and aspirations that when this is where it needs to be, hey, my dad, for some odd reason, wants a fucking motorhome. I want to pull up in an eighty thousand dollar motorhome. Is he gonna drive it? No idea. But he's gonna. But he's gonna want it. You know what I mean? Same thing with my mom. Like, hey, but all those times and, and days you believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you what you always wanted, which is peace, which is tranquility, and that could be in a trip. That can be in. Let me buy you a house in Santa Maria, where next to your parents, you know, with your family, or whatever it may be. Moms are so simple. All they need, all they really wanted from us. I was telling uh, the bus driver yesterday for high school. I was like, what's crazy is all your parents wanted for you was to you for you to be okay. And to be better than them. To be better than them. Yes, they pressure you to be successful, to have a degree, to have a uh, nine to five job that pays you really well, that's going to have you in retirement. But whatever you become at the end of the day, they're happy as long as they see you happy. So... You know, don't don't blame them for putting so much pressure on you. They, at least they gave a fuck about you to give you pressure. There's some parents that I haven't seen my kid in years. Yo, your parent, your mom, your dad, they put pressure on you because they seen it in you and they want you to be better. At the end of the day, all they wanted for you was for you to be okay. So it it's and to be okay without them. Yeah, being able I, to I think to we, live without it, them. With yeah, the intention is always to set up our kids to do better. Mm -hmm you know, than us, but also to be without us. Yeah. You know, you want to give them tools to be able to succeed and not just be mouth feeding them. Yeah. That's, that, let that be a question. Now. That has that. To be a question. Ooh. Oh, dude, I should have caught that in fucking video. That's crazy. Time for financial freedom. We can freedom. record this We can one. record this. Uh, I'll record we can do a refill. Finish. We can, yeah, let me see I'll your record. cup. I just want to just a cup. Hold on. Last. El Rantu. He said, let me get a re el que no lo había probado. That's a lie. He be doing the carajillos, though. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to reach out to you. Hey, that, that's another question, but we won't do it. Don't, we won't do it. Uh, do you want to answer on, it? On, on camera. No, no, no. I'm saying carajillos or espresso martinis. <laughs> carajillos when you're in tequila, Mexico. <laughs> and I'll take an espresso martini when I'm here. Y cuando estás en Barbusa, en San Diego, los espresso martinis. Los espresso martinis, martinis that's oh. right. Okay. I mean, the cameras, everything's already rolling on. Uh, so, question. Just kind of piggyback what you said right now. Go for it. Piggyback. Uh, since <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know you're going to speak truth. When you, I'll speak truth. Okay. So, when you go out on a date, okay, do you look at what your partner orders as a drink? Does what they order as a drink say a lot about them? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, the order of tequila. She's a fun time. <laughs> he ready. Oh, she, he re no, she's ready. <laughs> okay. We're, we're if, wait, if, if it's, is it a he or is she ordering tequila? Oh, for you, it's your partner. The guy is yeah. getting a tequila? Oh, he's trying to, he's trying to get it. <laughs> See, same thing. She okay. said okay. it's Very not much. just the wine and dine. Okay, if they, what if they order vodka? Uh, boring. Not my type. It's a little too basic for me. Uh, Unless it's in a martini. Unless it's in an espresso martini. Unless it's different. in an espresso martini. If, she's, if she gets an espresso martini at Barbusa, she's kind of bougie. You know? She's bougie. Just again, a little bit. Classy. Hey, a little classy. Look, I mean, guys, I'm going to give you guys a hint right now. So if you're dating someone or you're liking somebody, got nothing to do, bring them to San Diego. You got, you want to go eat brunch or go eat dinner somewhere? Little Italy? Favorite Favorite spot to go. Where should we go in Little Italy? I heard of this place called uh, Barbusa. Barbusa. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I heard the food is chulada. It is. Chulada. But, I mean, if you guys really like it, bring the San Diego. If you don't, just take her to McDonald's. <laughs> All right, baby. Please don't. <laughs> Hit us with the questions.
Let's go. I mean, we're wrapping this up pretty shortly. So one really Why good one. We're trying one. to wrap it up. We're just getting started. La gente va a empezar a llegar. Does it even matter? Nah. We want an audience, oh, right? Hey, hey. You always wanted a live audience, right? I don't. I'm the can shy we, one. Can we start that? I'm the shy thing? one. Live audience? Maybe for, one. For oh, the podcast? I'm down. Let's do this. Game changer. Game changer. They, we can we can connect the fourth mic. Hey, come in here. Let's ask you a question. Hey, audience. Yeah. Hey, open this door right here. Open the door right here. <laughs> ¿Qué pasa, el desgraciado? Oh, oh. Right, hit it. What does family mean to you? Mm, purpose. Yeah. It's my purpose. I, it's the reason I do everything, you know? It's the reason we grind and we lose sleep. And honestly, without family, like, I wouldn't be here, you know? In the good times and the bad I know that I can always count on family. So do you think family, in a way, saved you? Yeah, Pepe. <laughs> Hold on. Let, 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 I'm going I'm to up his, his question. I know where he's going with this. I just got to ask this. Who in your life saved your life without them knowing? My daughter. My daughter. I was in a really broken stage um, when I got pregnant. Mm-hmm. And I was very reckless. I was really crazy. I didn't care. I would honestly, like, drink and drive sometimes mm. because I was just, I didn't care about my life, yeah. you know? And I didn't see a purpose. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just kind of going through the motions, yeah. you know? And I didn't know that I could love someone so deeply like I do my daughter. Hmm. I and I and it's crazy because during that time I would I would be saying like oh I don't even know if I want to have kids I can never have kids yeah. ah, kids are so ungrateful and ah, they take up so much of your time oh I'm gonna be spending my money instead of buying myself like very superficial you know yeah. like just like oh I'm not gonna be able to buy myself things or take myself yeah. anywhere if I have kids and then God says, sit down, girl. You don't know what you're saying. You know, like you need purpose. I'm going to give you a purpose. And as soon as I got pregnant, I questioned everything. Like, mm. honestly, on, and, and I, I don't mind sharing this part. It's like it was an accident. And I, I, as I'm saying, like, I was never expecting to even get pregnant or at least not that soon. And I honestly had an abortion already scheduled i wasn't gonna have her Mm. and i just believe in angels i i'm really connected like with so many angels on earth like you (laughs) i told him yesterday i was like i don't know what it is and i'm like i think there's one of my family members are like reincarnated in Luis because literally at the exact moment at the exact time that i need to hear a message I come across one of his videos. I have a pop-up of, like, the podcast. And it's just the exact part that I need to listen to and no more. And I'm just like, this is what I needed, you know? So it just kind of, like, gets you through the day. And I appreciate, that. I appreciate my angels on earth. They're they're incredible. So, I mean, in this case, it was one of my best friends, um, Karen. Mm-hmm. She's just like, oh, what is it about this guy? Like, I can't believe it, whatever. Yeah. You're bringing him around, and, uh, like, he must be so special. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, and I just kind of, like, start telling her all these things. And I was like, I was like, I'm pregnant. And I was like, but, like, as, as before she could even say anything, she's, I was like, but I have an abortion on, on Monday. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an abortion. And she's like, she got so mad and and I was like, I was mad at her for getting mad at me. Yeah. I'm like, how dare you judge me? You know, I'm like, you d- like this is an accident. I'm like, I, I don't really even know this person. Like, I, I don't even know myself. And I'm like, how am I going to take care of a child? That can't even take care of me. Yeah. And she was like, Darcy, she's like, a child is a blessing. And she's like, I, she's like, you know that I, I'm, I've never, I've expressed before that I don't really want to have kids. She's like, but a child is a blessing. And she's like, when have you ever taken the easy route anyways? She's like, Darcy? She's like, Darcy is going to take the easy route? She's like, what are you scared of? And I was like, I'm in school. I need to finish my school. I just got back into UCSD. I need to graduate. I need to graduate. I was just stressing about school. 
and I was like, I need to prove to my dad that I'm going to, I'm going to graduate. And I was yeah. like, this is going to set me back. I'm not going to be able to graduate. And then she's like, Darcy surpasses every single challenge that has ever been placed in front of her. Mm-hmm. She's like, why do you want it to be easy anyways? Yeah. And she's like, you're going to get like greater satisfaction Thanks. from surpassing the challenges. So I was <clears> like, damn. <laughs> and, yeah. and it was just really crazy because we had just crossed the border. We went out, whatever. It was her husband's birthday. And we were at the border. And there was like five cars and this is why i tell you that these are my angels speaking to me because there was five cars there was no reason for us to be more than five minutes to cross the border 10 20 we were there for a good like 30 minutes we had this whole conversation because something happened they had to close down the border we talked about it as soon as we finished they opened to Boom. bring back God's the lanes timing. again and i'm like god don't make mistakes he doesn't make mistakes Never. i canceled the appointment obviously and i just always thank her like i i call her my angel and i'm just like you you saved me you know you saved me from myself because who knows if i would even be here right now with how reckless and how crazy i was taking my life and i'm like now my daughter gives me that purpose that i was looking for i didn't know i needed her Mm. until i had her in my stomach and i i gave everything you know Mm. i was so careful Mm. I I pushed through it all. I was pregnant. I finished school four months after my daughter was born. I started working at three weeks after I gave birth via right. C-section. I could barely even stand, but it's like for my baby. That's and I'm like do. two hours of sleep. No pasa nada. I was like, I need to make this happen for my baby. I need to graduate because of my yeah. baby. I need to work because of my baby. I'm like, a ella no le va a hacer falta nada. And I'm like, it, I always tell her, it, you're okay. Mommy's got you. You're okay. Mommy's got you. And she'll repeat that back to me. Every, every beautiful thing that I tell my daughter, Good she thing. now tells me, yeah. you know? And, and it's just a beautiful thing of, like, now I need her, yeah. you know? And it's it's so it's amazing how how mm. much you can change from your mindset. Yeah. And literally, she saved me, and she's given me the greatest purpose on earth. And I I can't explain if you're not a parent. Um, baby, if you're not a parent. But no. just... Just imagine how much your life can change because you know that a little person is depending on you. And now they're watching you. And everything that you say, you do. If you're not living out your dreams, how do you expect them to live out their dreams? You know, you and have to be that example. I don't have kids, um, but I have two nieces, one nephew. Yeah. And uh, my niece doesn't know it. I mean, she may know it because I've said it before. Shout out, Emily. Um, she's my little angel. No. I was going through probably the darkest times, the darkest time for some reason, right? And uh, I found out my sister was pregnant. Like, I just felt she was pregnant. My sister didn't confirm she was pregnant or anything. I just saw her. I saw my sister. I'm like, you're pregnant. And when, even then, she, she literally denied being pregnant. She's like, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I knew she was pregnant. And That's so in crazy. a sense, like... She's the reason why I stuck around because there were times that I didn't want to stick around. So now it's, I do everything for her. I want to make her proud. I want to be around for her. The other ones, obviously I want to be around for, but something about Emily, like she has my heart and she'll probably always will. I wanted to ask you a question because um, I think it's a, the perfect wrap ups before we do our, our quotes and our reflections. Um, but for you, what is that one thing you always needed to hear from your dad? Me? Mm-hmm. What's that one message you always wanted to hear from your dad that you waited so long for? It? When I told my dad that I was pregnant, um, my partner at the time you know, was obviously with me. And he said, are you with her because you love her? Or are you with her because you got her pregnant? Mm. And he just stayed quiet. Like, my dad is very intimidating. He's a very, like, intense man. (laughs) And I'm just like, tell him how much you love me. (laughs) And my dad was like, because if you're just with her because you got her pregnant, he's like, don't worry. He's like, I'm going to take care of her. And that part just, oof. Well, just, just to know that he, 
But what's that, that what's that message you needed to hear? Because you know how you he, said, like, you're... Like, I know you guys have a good relationship. He just made me feel like everything was going to be okay. You know, like, no matter what, because I was so scared. Like, I didn't know how I was going to be able to take care of this little human. Yeah. And now it's so a crazy, like, full circle because... Um, I, I live with, well, my dad lives with me now, you know? We live yeah. together, and, and now, like, yeah, like, it's literally us three, you know? It's like, she's she's kind of, like, getting that paternal figure partially from my dad, too, and it's like, they're so excited to see each other, they ask for each other all the time, and I'm and now that, like, I think about it, it's so crazy how he's like, don't worry, like, I'm going to yeah. take care of them, and now it's like, I know that I can kind of step back from that masculine energy sometimes and yeah. lean on my dad That's, because he's got mm-hmm. us, you know, like, what do you need? How, when yeah. I, what can I help you with? What do you got to do now? What, what work, whatever, whatever you want me to take the baby? You know what I mean? Like, it's so beautiful that I, I know that I got that, I, that I can count on him Yeah. for anything, you know, for you. I know you've been around when we asked this question, but I don't think you've ever answered it. Um, what is he said? <laughs> same question, but what is that one thing that you always needed to hear from the your most important people in your life? My mom said it. My sister recently said it. She actually said it. Th- uh, she said it this week. Um, she sent me a couple things, a couple of those little cheesy Instagram videos that a lot of people think are cheesy. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you just need to see them mm-hmm. at the right time. Divine and it timing. was, honestly, we were sitting right across the table from each other and she sent me one. And she's like, hey, I sent you something. And we never send any, each other anything, right? Yeah. And I'm like, am I going to crack? <laughs> and she's like, you might. So I opened it up and it was just uh, to my brother. I'm proud of you. I know a lot of the times I don't say I'm proud of you, but just know that I'm seeing everything you're doing. I've seen everything that you've accomplished and I'm rooting for you. And so she said it, my mom said it, and I'm still waiting for the day that my dad says it. Like he, to this day, he hasn't said it. And I don't know if it's because he doesn't feel proud or what it is. Maybe he's just too prideful, but I'm still waiting for that day. Okay. Do you tell yourself that I'm proud of you? Not as often as you need to? You could say I do. I mean, a lot more this year than I did previous years. Definitely. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Hell yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I love you. I love you too. And I just And your your life matters. And you're creating an impact. And I think that you can find comfort that you've already impacted one person, including myself. So thank you, thank you. Your your life matters so much, and maybe one day you'll be able to be that dad that you needed, and that's gonna be a beautiful blessing. I sure hope so. No doubt. Thank you. There's um, there's a thing that I told Pepe the day of my birthday, uh, on Wednesday, and you know. I know some of you guys feel this way because it's been a, it's been a, man, it's been a transition of, of different emotions, a roller coaster of emotions. And this time last year, I, I wanted more to not be around than to be around. I was surrounded by the people I needed to. I was surrounded by a lot of love, support, but I just didn't want to be around. My message that I have now is I want everybody to know that I want to be around. For many more years to come. I need you. Because life is beautiful. And life Amen. Life is going to give you everything and then some. And God is going to give you the things that you need at the time that you need it. When you least expect it. And you got to be able to take those lessons the way they come. Um, there's a, a thing. If, I wrote it a couple weeks ago. And it's, um, it's about growth. And I think this is just perfect for it. But it says, growth comes with every emotions you never wanted to feel. The hurt, the sad moments, the insecurities, the anger. Every emotion that you wanted to avoid, it happened. It's here. You have to go through these growing pains so you build a new shield in life so you don't break easy. You know, 
don't give up at the sight of any trouble. Growth is everything. It's ugly, it's scary to live through, but it's also beautiful and a blessing. And that comes with everything in this life. That's why before when I was outside and you're like, oh, he's done. Literally doing a video in Spanish about Los Caminos de la Vida. Like that song, dude, that song, Los Caminos. Oh, man. Get cr- <laughs> but. Cumans. Is it right? Cumans. No, nah, no, nah, because then the like, monetization turns off. But aren't you more scared to stay the same? Me? I'm more. I'm scared to not reach my fullest potential. And that's so cliche to say because every year I'm growing, every month, every week, I got to grow. And I heard it before. If you're not growing monthly, weekly, yearly, you're wasting time. And I'm not here to waste time. I'm here to become the best version of myself because I owe it to myself and the people that believed in me, even when I didn't, Mm -hmm. deserve that. They deserve me to be that. You have people watching. Yeah, I need to be that. So they count on me, and I got to count on me too. So if I don't show up, then I'm not just failing them, but I'm failing myself. And I'd rather not... I'm more scared of failing my loved ones that believed in me than to fail myself. So because... I love you guys too much because I love you too much. I'm not going to quit because I can't sit here and be like, I love you. That's why I do this. But then the first sign I quit, I didn't love you that much. You know, that's why when they say, oh, for your family, your friend, oh, you're doing it for them. Oh, wait, why did you stop them? Why'd you quit? You don't love them that much. Are you sure about that? So my thing is like, no, I'm not quitting. I love you. You love me. And I'm going to be that person. So I don't know if do you guys have quotes that you guys can leave us with for people to hear this, to people to resent with, and that has helped you throughout your journey right now? Um, kind of, you know, on the topic of parenting and stuff, the battles you refuse to fight, your kids are going to have to fight. And that one hit deep, deep, you know? The inner work that you're refusing to confront, the, the traumas that you've, faced and you've kind of stepped over you have to go and clean up your mess that's part of healing you need to confront it you need to relive it so that your kids don't have to relive those things and that is super important it's it's so important to take the time to heal it's scary it's painful it's like the thing that you've been avoiding but you're going to have to do it in fear anyways because you look at your kids or you think about the kids that you're going to have if you're not a parent yet and you tell them that I don't love you enough to do the work so that you don't have to suffer like I did. And I love my daughter so much. I will go through the pain 20 times, 50 times to avoid her to have the traumas that I I grew up with. And and some of them were like uh, subconscious. Like I told you, like I... I can I can talk about my childhood and say that it was such a beautiful like childhood, you yeah. know, like no me hizo falta nada. Mm-hmm. But now that I I think back, it's like I didn't have the most abundant, the most I wasn't the richest kid. I I used to be made fun of for having one pair of shoes. You know what I mean? Like, but I was so content. I was so happy. I was so fulfilled because I had my family. Yeah. You know, and even now that my parents are not together. It's like a, no matter what, we're going to show up. We're going to go to the graduation. We're going to go to that party. We're going to go and we're going to put our differences aside because we love our kids more than we care about our differences. And that's the example that I want to show my daughter. That it's like, no matter what, I'm going to do the work so that you can enjoy the ride. I love that. I love that. Pepe? Pepe. Get us. I don't have one today. Ah, oh, get the fuck out. Pepe. I don't have fired, one today. Fired. Fired. I don't have one today. Come back, come back. Uh, can I say it? No. Can I say one and then you finish it off? Sure. Yeah. So you give me a little bit more time. I thought you well, had one. I I, I want to ask you summary. what what would you tell yourself from ten years ago mm-hmm. that you didn't know then and you do now? Say your quote. I need more time to think. I <laughs> <laughs> right. I meant to you earlier, but um. It makes so much sense, and I know this comes to try to get out of, like, that victim scenario. So important. And it says, my side of the story doesn't matter anymore. Life happened. I healed. But the most important I learned was 
Sorry, let me do this shit again. No, mames, ya la cagué la verga. All right. <laughs> la víctima. I know. No, Cut this I'm out. I know, I'm for sure. Víctima. My side of the story doesn't matter anymore. Life happened. I healed. But most importantly, I learned who deserves a seat at my table and who will never see it again. Yeah. I forgive, but I never forget. Yep. I forgive you for what you did for what you did to me, but I will never forget what you did to me. I forgive you for me, but not for you. Yeah, you need that on your own. <laughs> you ain't coming over here to get that fucking apology for. That victim mentality, man. It's yeah, so fuck that. it's so important. Like I I've been there and that's why I feel like I'm so judgmental now that it's just yeah. like I wasted six months of my life in that victim mentality, thinking yeah. that poor me, why me, everything happens to me, it's not fair, this person has that because of this, it's not fair that they had a jump start or they have whatever it is. Yeah. Like, I was that person, and it's so crazy because it's just like, when you play the victim card, you put your cards in other people's hands yeah. because you start pointing the finger, but guess what? When you point the finger, there's three pointing back at you. It is always... You always take part of everything that happens to you because of yeah. how you react to it, at Facts. least, at least. So yeah. you're exactly where you want to be because you want to, Facts. you know? And and you, if you don't like where you're at, you're not a tree. You can move. Yeah. You can move. So change starts within you. And if you change your mindset, you change your life. If you don't like where you are, then you find a way to freaking move. There, there's no reason for you to stay the same. In order for life to change, you got to change. You must change. Ooh. Bebe, you got to end this. Bebe. Did you have time? What would you tell your younger self that you know now? I know you got a lot, Bebe. I don't. No, I do. What was it? Me in my 20s, I would tell myself, it's okay to fail. People will come into your life, and they will exit your life, and that's also okay. Um, people will hurt you, but... It's okay. Uh, people will betray you and they will take away things that you. No, I'm not going to go there. All right, stop. The people need to hear it. The people mm -hmm. that are in your place. People will rob you from experiences. But it'll be okay. Always will. Look at It'll you thriving okay. right now. Hell yeah. Your Man. younger self so proud of you. You're still here. I'm still here. You're still here. And that, it's a blessing. And that is what matters. We're still mm -hmm. here. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Shout out to Bar Barbosa. 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 For you guys haven't tried it already? We have. Oh, man. Busa. Espresso martini in a bottle. There you go. Get yourself some. We're already on our second round. You're still? No, you're still in your first one. Stop. No. Stop. Not your second one. Did the camera stick it up? We got a refill. We got a refill. Hey, you, you feel my cup. Talking about. I did, man. Uh, but. Hey, you feel my cup, and now I got to feel yours. One more round. Let's do this. <laughs> but, man, shout out to, to, to you for setting this up for us, sitting down with Thank us, you. and having, having a very powerful, organic, authentic conversation that. Neither you were prepared, neither me and Pepe were prepared to really think that it was going to flow this way. And we have pointers. We had ideas where we wanted to, but you cannot script these type of conversations. They're so candid. They're so authentic. They're so genuine. And I hope as much as it's healing for us, having the conversations with each other, the people that are listening in get to heal also and, and maybe spark an idea in their head of maybe now it's time to make that change. So thanks to you. Thank you to Pepe. Thank you, thank you. And shout out to everybody watching, subscribing, sharing. A toast to life. We can't do this without you guys. And we love you guys. So stay tuned and for the next one. And your life matters. Let's go.